Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday indeed. I think you were dancing more than me while the music was going on. I'm impressed. Oh, was I? I, I you might, I was adjusting stuff. So it probably looked like I was dancing. Oh. I was, I was feeling better about my dancing abilities. <laughs> I was like, well, she dances too, and I dance, and that's good. We're all dancing. We're yeah. All dancing. Oh, yeah, I dance. Happy Saturday. We are all of into you studios. We're here every single Saturday morning at this time, which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And that's Carolyn, the one who wasn't dancing, but I thought was. She dyes all the beautiful yarn you see in front of me and behind me. And I'm Michelle. I do other things, customer service overseas shipping and all that sort of thing. If you haven't done so already, we invite you to hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell button so you get notifications every time we're live because sometimes, like even right now, we're in the midst of a knit along, we go live midweek sometimes with some information or updates or that sort of thing that you don't want to miss out on. Be sure and give us a thumbs up. You can do that right now already. Welcome to everybody who's here live this morning and welcome to those who are watching us later. We're so glad that you've made time to be with us either live or later. That's the beauty of YouTube. You can watch it anytime it's convenient for you. I see some of our Yarny Hughes here this morning. I do, yeah. And, and there's quite a few over on Instagram now as well. Nice. I like it. So Liz, May, Dion, Connie, Sharon's back in New Smyrna Beach. She's splitting her time now, I think, between New York and New Smyrna. Teresa, Tulsa Trio's in the house. Tish is here. Lonnie, Belinda, all sorts of people. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have got one of the most sought after Olive and To You colorways that has been back in the shop. But let me just say, it was back in the shop, but now it's going to have to be back in the shop again because it has not spent any time languishing on the shelves, let me tell you. No Limits is the great big news this week. Look at this beautiful colorway. It is uber versatile. I'm going to take the cuff off. That'll test my ability to get the cuff back on later. Look at that colorway. Is that beautiful or what? Carolyn, you always outdo yourself, but No Limits is like, it's just stunning. And it is one of the most versatile colorways. Many of our colorways are extremely versatile, but this is the most versatile colorway, I think, arguably, that we have in the shop. And before I'm going to let you talk about it for a minute, because I do want you to talk about it, I want to show it on Wolf because, and so many of these bases are sold out that they're on pre-order now. So do not be discouraged. They're on pre-order. Look at it on Wolf, which is the new darling in the shop. New, not in the sense that it's a brand new base, but um, everybody's discovered it. And so now it we can't keep it in stock. And no limits on this is just these beautiful, deep, deep jewel tones. Absolutely stunning. No matter how you slice it, it is just beautiful. And I really honestly cannot think of a solid or semi-solid that we have in the shop that wouldn't work with it. Maybe all you can eat crab legs would be a little light for it. But for the most part, nearly everything is going to work with this. I'm thinking right now about how beautiful it would be with Cavendish mm -hmm. specifically. So I want you to tell us a little bit about this colorway, why it's not in the shop as often, and a little bit about how you do this. So No Limits is actually one of our oldest colorways. And I think that's one of the reasons why it goes so well with most of our semi-solids is because I remember the day that I envisioned it, um, it was, I was like, you know, I have this, I have a ton of dye powders, but I, I definitely have the favorites, the ones that are most used, especially for the semi-solids or the tonal solids. And so I was, I think I had been dyeing up a bunch of them and I was rinsing off my, um, my whey plates that I use on the scale. And I saw all the colors coming together and I was like, I need to put all of those in one colorway. And that was basically what happened. And so that's why, I mean, you name it, you can pair it with a purple like Riaga, any of the blues like bright that we'll talk about later, any of the pinks and I mean, greens, like most of, like Michelle said, it goes with most of them. So, and the reason that I dyed it was 
because it's a dye technique that I do um, that I used for this last dye live. So the dye live people may have gotten a heads up early that it was going into the shop yesterday or Thursday. One of the benefits of being part of the dye live plus club, I might <laughs> Absolutely. Add. So I dyed it up to show them an example of that dye technique. And then of course we use that dye technique on um, the over the top colorway. So yeah, it uses 17 different dye powders. And with that dye technique, because there's so much dye powder um, going in, I tend to dye one side of the colorway and then I usually let it cool uh, before I dye the other side. So it's very time consuming because you want all those colorways to exhaust and even though some of them do blend together, you want them to have their own space too and not get muddied um, in the colorway. So it, it does take a long time, but um, yeah, it's definitely a favorite. It's so, so worth it. It's gorgeous. So as we mentioned, most of the bases are on pre-order right now. There are some bases that it did not come out on. So if you're interested, like it's not available on Homer, which is our, our beloved DK base, um, or Socrates or, or some of the others, if you need it on those bases, now is the time to set your up for, yourself up for a special order. And I would recommend, I don't often say this, I know you're surprised by that, but I don't. I would recommend that if, you are, if you're in love with it, even if you don't have a project picked out for it at the moment, now's the time to go ahead and set up your special order and stash it. So that way, because you're sure to find a project that's going to be perfect for it, that way you've got it available at that time. Of course, you can always do a special order. That's for sure true. But um, pre-orders on the ones on the basis that that's open on, that doesn't mean that means you don't have to order three or more Hank. So snag your fingering weights on the pre-order and then any other bases that you want that are not currently on pre-order, go ahead and set up your special order. She'll get them all dyed at the same time. And that way you've got them in your stash because it's a colorway you're going to find multiple uses for. And then going back to it, Bright is also, this is the very first time Bright has actually been in the shop. Bright was our Yarn Lounge swag color. Is that right, Carolyn? Yep. Some I don't remember ago. when. It was a long yeah, time, ago. time ago. And she now has dyed it for the shop. And it look how luscious this is on Wolf. It is stunning. Now, it's showing up a little different, the colorway on camera. If I pull it back here, it's a little more true to the color but it is absolutely stunning. This is on Wolf. This is great to pick up for your Wolfie socks. Look at that. Hubba hubba. Look at hubba. that. It's beautiful. Now we also have Bright on minis, both Hawthorne and Alcott. So if you're into socks, snag yourself some no limits and then a Bright mini. But yeah, look at that. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Beautiful. And I don't know where we're at, if that has sold out or not on bright i can double check that in just a moment you guys the sneaker peekers are doing it we started putting things up also um earlier a little later well thursday friday saturday you notice things on our page the same items generally that are in your newsletter but you always want to pay attention so um those are you know they, that's why they sell out really quick kim says you all have expanded my color palette i take awesome. that as a compliment that's great how fun to play with new colors and see what's going on and um, experiment. That's what I love, especially I like color experimentation in any form, but especially like Splitsville, we've talked about that. If you approach it with an attitude of let's see what happens, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the adventure? And No Limits is kind of like that too, because you have this host of different colors in it and it, it can change the look of your project depending upon where you start stitching in the hank. So you can play with that a little bit and kind of massage it to get the look that you want. Um, it's a lot of fun to play with. Yeah. And then whatever color or colors you pair it with will really in, bring out those colors in No Limits. So yeah, lots of fun. Ab absolutely. So Lonnie's a little disappointed. We did have the spring party pack. Those are actually gone. Those um, sold out really, really quickly. And I believe they've all already even been shipped. So I don't even have one to show you here today. I and I, I hated that. I knew that I, because I only had um, a certain number of those. Some of, I noted in the listing that some of those came from the previous dye studio, Fat Bunny Yarns. And then I dyed up some colors to finish it up. Um, I know I hated that, but you know, it's, it's early in spring. So who knows, maybe I can dye up something, you know, a different uh, array of colors for y'all and do another a different party. palette. 
I like it so yeah. much. So also in the shop this week, and I think it has already sold out too, is a one of a kind colorway. You all love those one of a kind colorways. You might recall that when we talk about a one of a kind colorway, a lot of dyers talk about that as a one hank, one off. We talk about it as we might have multiple hanks of a one of a kind colorway, meaning the colorway will not be repeated because it was sometimes an oopsie. Sometimes it was just one that she was playing with and experimenting with and didn't keep the recipe on. So um, hit or miss, I love the name here. It's so indicative of, of where this came from probably. And this, I believe, has already sold out as well. It's a super fun colorway. I keep seeing socks. Yeah, I know. that was So that was the practice pot for the Dye Live Plus Club. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the, the name, I love that. I love it so much. So the other thing that you see in front of me today is Atwood here in Slate. We're ever expanding our Atwood which is our bulky yarn. And I'm, I'm in love with it because I've been using it for my Gossamer Twist and it is delightful. And I'm not usually a fan of 100% Superwash Merino yarn. Can I just say that? But this has really beautiful properties to it and that colorway is just gorgeous. I love, love, love this, um, this kind of denim-y color. Mm -hmm. It looks so good. Yeah. Lonnie and has a great idea. Sorry. Um, so one of the things that um, I was going to say is um, with Atwood, you know, when I blocked Bo's sweater, it did not, I mean, it did grow as much as you would expect your wool to your project to grow, but it didn't, you know, a lot of people say hundred percent superwash Merino just grows exponentially, but that one didn't. And I don't know if it was because of the tighter stitch um, gauge that I had or what, but it didn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal. The ply on this is really good too and rather tight. Yeah. So that that may have some impact as well. I'm not sure. Lonnie says it's okay. She's thinking she's going to do a special order for a Lonnie Whimsy. You know, we haven't done mystery whimsies in a while either. That's true. To do that. And Lonnie is also saying that would be a good customer twist for me in Slate. It I would. Agree. Oh, yeah. That would look very good. I could do that. I will be having more Gossamer twists. I will also be having more Yoon's, I do believe. I do believe. Can we talk about the Yoon real quick? Yeah. I know we're, we're kind of rolling into whips prematurely, but I really want to talk about the Yoon because our spring out of winter make along is going really, really well. The Yoon is not a difficult sweater pattern, but it does, in fact, assume a certain amount of experience with patterns. We've talked about that. And we've got some brand new knitters that are doing it and they're doing great on it. In fact, I met with a Yarny U locally yesterday and we spent some time kind of illuminating the short row and increase part. And then the light went on. She's like, oh yeah, I get it now. It was just simply by adding some of the directions that seem to be kind of omitted from the pattern. Not technically. I mean, you can do the pattern with what's there, but it's helpful to have some a few extra words in there. And so Monica and I have been doing videos live each week. We did our second one this week. We'll do another one this coming week, probably on Wednesday, um, with some information about the pattern, seeing where we're at. You may remember that Monica actually ended up frogging hers from the collar and was going back because her collar was a bit large. And so she took the time, which I'm very impressed with. She took the time, went back and frogged it and redid it and... So it was, it was really, really good. But the good news is we've had several people say, oh man, I wish I'd done the Yoon now. Um, this, the kits are still available. The kits are still up on the website and the link is in your newsletter this morning. So you mm -hmm. can still order a kit. And if you don't like the color ways that we suggest, all you have to do is reach out to me and we'll work on finding you the perfect combination so you too can start your Yoon. You're not behind. And the good news is you can participate at any time. You don't have to have a finished object to be prize eligible. All you have to do is use all of them to you yarn. So order your Yoon kit. I want to see where you are on yours. Let's talk about Yoon real quick. Okay. Can we? Yeah. So I ended up, I went ahead and split for my sleeves. Here I am. So I've chosen slate is my DK not slate, I'm sorry. Um, Out of the Mist was my DK colorway. And then my Bronte colorway is slate. So here's where I currently am holding those together, which I, like you said, Michelle, I absolutely 
love the look. You went with a darker color for your DK and then a lighter color for Bronte. And I did exactly the opposite, but I think the effect is still um, lovely. Coming. So I was almost um, to the end of my increases. So after you do your short rows, you know, you still have to continue on with your increases. And I started looking at it and I was like, I don't know, that's looking awfully big. Do I want to finish all the increases or do I want to try it on and see if maybe I'm ready to stop with the increases? So I did. And I actually liked the way that it looked. So I knit, I stopped doing increases, did a couple more rows for length, and then I split for the sleeves. So I have split for my sleeves. Nice. So yeah. So now I just get to what knit until I'm ready to, and that's, I'm not sure where I'm going to start the whole split. Like I, I that makes me nervous because I, I need to decide where I'm going to split. But anyway, so yeah, I'm very happy with it. Good. It looks absolutely beautiful. You know, I was thinking about it. I was a little jealous of you. I was like, she's already split for her sleeves and I'm still doing my increases. And then I realized I'm a lot bigger than you. So it takes me longer to do your, you know, to, to, to do the rounds and stuff, which is fine. It's just, I was like, dang it. I really thought I was going to be close to, to doing that. Cause I really, and then I, I said on the video, the live video this week, Oh, I think I'm just a couple rows. No, I'm not. Oh, oh not. I was totally wrong and totally disappointed um, oh. about it. So I'll show mine. Although I use a shorter cable, I'm I'm also jealous because yours is um, on a long enough cable that it looks like a sweater. Mine looks like a hot mess. So <laughs> because I have it on such a short cable, but I've talked about it before. I like mine on a short cable because I don't have to fight to get the stitches to the end. They just advance nicely. Um, mm -hmm. because of the, the scrunchy nature of it, but it doesn't really look much like a sweater. Um, and I think I'm further along than it looks like from here, but yeah, but yeah, I love, love, love this color combination. I used true and then silver linings for my color combination. And I, you may recall, I wobbled on that a little bit and was like, Oh, trying to rethink it. And then in the end, I decided to stick with true and silver linings. And I'm really glad I did. I, I could not be happier with this color combination. And I love yours too, equally as well. It is yeah. interesting, isn't it? The reverse of the colors, the light and the dark, and kind of seeing how that how that works out. Yeah. yeah. May says it looks like a cute purse. <laughs> I could stop now. I could make a Yoon purse. When I first started mine, Morgan was like, are you knitting a hat? I was like, no, it's not a hat. What do you mean a hat? That's funny. It doesn't even yours doesn't even look like a hat. Well, so, I guess earlier on it did, especially with this. It kind of looks like a hat brim, maybe. Brown. So Dion was the yarn of you. She called herself out. So I, I who came in yesterday and we worked on her short rows and she's going to finish them today. So um, stay tuned Wednesday when Monica and I go live. My intent on that, I haven't done this up to that point, frankly, because things have been a little hairy around here. But this coming Wednesday, I'm going to take the time on the live video to show you exactly what you need to write on your pattern and exactly how to isolate things. So if you're having any trouble or any anxiety about getting through the short row increase section, that four row area that you repeat multiple times, I'm going to get you through it this Wednesday on the live that we're going to do with Monica. So we'll probably have some other information there as well but I'm going to tell you exactly what to write and exactly what to do. So I'll hey, walk you through it. After the short rows, did you change out your colored stitch markers for the increases? I did not. So I ended up changing mine because do you remember how um, for the short rows, I think I did it the way that you did it, where I had one color surrounding those raglan stitches. And then there was another color at the sleeve or the other end outside of that mm -hmm. where the sleeve started. Yeah. So once I was done with the short rows, I found that kind of confusing. So I ended up changing the stitch marker so that where the increases were, I had one color for every make one right and another color for every make one left so that I knew as soon as I saw my pink stitch marker, I was like, oh, that's a make one right. As soon as I saw the yellow, I knew it was a make one left. So I did change out the color. Okay. Of that makes sense. I remember because it's basically right left of the 
of the item. I think in the section after that four rows, my size, you have to do another set, cup, few rounds of increases, but you don't do them on the sleeves. You only do them yeah. at the raglan or vice versa. And I think at that point, I'll change out some things about my stitch markers to be sure, because that would be a little confusing to me, I think. Yeah. So looking ahead in the pattern. The one thing that Dion, the light kind of went on yesterday when she and I were working together was the information is there. Yes. You just have to really read it closely. And I think that we get used to, myself included, I did the same exact thing. I mean, I'll cop to it all day long. Um, you get so used to reading a pattern a certain way. And so for me, if I see make one left or make one wrong, like, yeah, 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 I know how to do those. You know, you kind of gloss mm -hmm. over the things that are really familiar perhaps without paying attention to the way they're written in this particular pattern. And it's always a good idea when it's a designer that you've not knit before. And I know Carolyn, neither you nor I have ever knit with this particular designer, November Knits. Um, it's a good idea to really pay close attention because to get used to their pattern design style, because there's as many ways to write a pattern and to sort of articulate what you're trying to express in a pattern as there are pattern designers. Mm -hmm. So I know you've knit a lot of, I can't think of the name, the, the pattern designer that you like a lot. Isabel Kramer. Isabel Kramer. And so you're very used to the way she writes her patterns. Yeah. And, you know, I'm used to, you know, some other people sort of. Um, Kadri, I've gotten used to her. She has a different design system, but I've done two of her patterns now. And I'm working on my third project two different patterns the sarin and then the gossamer twist so i've gotten kind of used to her and um jen steingast we've done some of hers this is with i'm wearing my dark water today by the way which is a jen steingast pattern and so you kind of get used to doing that um so it's really important to pay attention then dion says and the right side wrong side conundrum exactly exactly so we'll talk a little bit more about that on Wednesday during our live with Monica. Monica is a brand new sweater knitter. And part of the reason we're doing those lives is to get her impressions and kind of see her journey through the sweater knitting process. And so far she is absolutely loving it. Nice. So that is okay. really good news. Okay. Before we get to whips, I want to talk about something that's coming up here at Needleworks, actually a two some things that are coming up here at Needleworks, but let's talk about Botanical scarf dyeing first. Woo woo! That was so much fun at the following retreat. Yeah. So uh, let's see. April thirteenth, coming up next month, right before we head to Scotland, we're hosting a botanical scarf dyeing class at Needleworks. If you're local, um, we'd love to have you come. You can dye up. You can choose. This time, you can choose uh, one or two scarves to dye up. And I've already started the soaking and curing process so that those will set nicely. We'll be using totally um, natural elements, natural dye powders and flowers. And we'll go over um, when you come, we'll go over how to do that and um, different ways that you can achieve different looks with your scarf and or scarves if you choose to do too. And then um, we'll have some extras as well and instructions for how you can do it at home if you would like to do it on your own at a later date. And these are nice size scarves. They're a little bit bigger than the ones you see in the pictures. Um, so they're 14 by 72. So you get a good two feet wide by like, uh, what is that, six feet long. So it's a nice, um, but they're silk. So it's not heavy at all. Perfect for Florida or anywhere um, just a nice, beautiful, lightweight scarf that you can wear or gift to someone else. It's fabulous because it's spring, which coincides kind of with Mother's Day and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's, they are a great gift. You could do a, you know, one for a friend, one for a bestie, a mother, daughter, whatever you want to do. And it'll be a lot of fun here at Needleworks. It's always a great time when we all get together here at Needleworks. So the link is in your newsletter this morning. Those registrations are going really, really quickly, I noticed. So you want to go ahead and snag your registration and get in on the scarf dyeing. And then, of course, our wreath, our spring wreath workshop is coming up next Saturday, the 30th of March here at Needleworks. We're just going to have a good time. It's not a hard thing to do. It's just fun. You end up with a really cute little spring wreath. You can make it your own. We'll have felt and all kinds of supplies here for you to do it. I'll have some cookies here as well. 
and we'll just enjoy some time crafting for the spring. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Karen. She is tuning in today from Scotland. Karen, I'm curious what part of Scotland you're in. She says it's sunny there today. So we're anxious to know what our weather is going to be like when we travel there at the end of April. And that trip is coming up really, really fast. It's virtually a month away. So that is coming up super, super fast. And I'm very excited if you're traveling to Scotland with us. We just got our final technical itinerary. So once everything had happened, we've got a few changes I think you're going to be really happy with. And one of the things in, I'm just going to say, we're going to eat a sack lunch at our Dolanish Beach while we're there at our Dolanish that I'm very, very excited about. Of course, if you're not comfortable going down to the beach, you don't have to, but it's going to be a lot of fun and um, very, very excited. So be aware if you're heading to Scotland, you're going to be getting some emails pretty quickly about some things to double check and some information. Um, I've got a couple people. I'm going to be informing them about their roommate matches. So that's a lot of fun. I think we did a good job on that and that everybody will get along well. And then your swag will be coming probably in the next two and a half weeks or so. Your swag is going to get to you probably just before we leave, but it should get to you before we leave. So that's good news. All the goody, all the goody swag stuff of which Carolyn's already given you a little bit of a heads up on some of the goodies you're getting directly from Olive and To You Studios. So we're, we're can't wait for our trip to Scotland. It's going to be so much fun. The vendors that we're going to be meeting over there are very excited. And yeah, we're going to have a great time. Karen says she's in Hamilton, just south of Glasgow. Okay, great. Love to connect with you. That would be awesome. We're not headed to Glasgow this time, but you never know what can happen along the way. That's true. As the last trip showed us, you never know what can happen along the way. Hey, I want to address what Valera said. She said kits and video class would be great for those of us that are far away. Um, that might be something that we can work on. Probably not before our Scotland trip, but um, definitely that we could um, do some shipping of scarves and the dye material and then do like a Zoom class. And because it's super easy, like this is something that you can, um, I was going to say and forgot, you can add to your scarf. I told the ladies when we did it at Halloween treat that um, if you get flowers, you know, like for Mother's Day and birthdays and stuff like that, this is a great way to remember them. You can re prep your scarf or have a scarf that you're constantly adding to and putting the flowers down and and seeing what colors they create. So that might be something that we definitely can um, can get, can do after Scotland. Great. Valera says, sign me up. We'd almost start a waiting list, but we're not going to do that because we're not good at maintaining waiting lists all the time <laughs> for classes. We are for trips, not for classes so much. Okay, we have talked about the Yoon sweater, so I want to see what everybody else is working on because people are doing some really, really cool things out there. So let's see what our yarn of are stitching up. Whips and FOs. All right, you fly first, Carolyn. Oh, oh, yes, I'm so excited about this one. So Anne posted this. She is knitting. Um, she's using two strands together. She has caught the bug. So she's using Rawlings, which was a one-of-a-kind whimsy. I remember this one, Spotted Blue Leopard. And she's holding it with um, Caledonia on Bronte. And I think she said she's, yeah, she's making a hat. So she's using it for worsted weight which that's one of the things I love about when you combine Bronte um, because that all of that um, halo that's on it, depending on what you combine it with and your needle size, you can make it different gauges. So, um, you know, you can make it like into a tight knit DK she could have done here, but she's doing it as a worsted weight. So yeah, you've got a lot of versatility there. I love it so much. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And here's a great example of what Bronte can do. So Cindy Titus is doing In the Groove, which is her DK weight. Is that right? For the Yoon. And then yep. she's also using, I believe it's Berry on Bronte. And look how the Berry takes over. It's amazing. But you can see some of those, the yellow speckles and the black speckles shining through. Oh, it's gorgeous. Which adds to the interest. I love it so much. She said, not ready to separate for the sleeves. I wonder if she meant she was ready. I don't know. Cindy, tell us. Am I reading yeah, that wrong? It's looking pretty far along. I wonder yeah. if she isn't ready. 
It looks so, so good. So incredibly yeah. good. I love okay. it. Okay. Oh, and here is Mary's. So she has started the front and back split. So you can tell she went a little bit farther down before she started her split. The pattern, I think, calls for it um, or shows it a little bit higher, but the designer leaves that up to you. Oh, and it looks so good. I know one of those is Olive and Two You yarn, but I don't remember which one <laughs> to you. And then she used, a, excuse me, a stash. I will tell you, you can notice on this picture, I think, how the ribbing, of course, is drawing in as ribbing is wont to do. And mm -hmm. it's interesting in the project pages of the pattern, if you go through those, which it's always a good idea to do, it helps to prep you for things to look at in the pattern and things to consider. If you look at the photos of the project pages for the Yoon sweater and Ravelry, you'll see most people blocked it. There were a couple people who did not block it before they took their pictures. And the ribbing, the long ribbing part almost looks like a strange apron. I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah. do that. Not ugly, not bad, just a little weird because it draws in. Yeah. Um, so I think on this, this is going to be one of those sweaters that I personally will be certain to go ahead and block because oh, yeah. of that interesting space. That helps your, your yarn to bloom a bit. It helps your stitches to kind of spread out and all get their own space, open up a little bit so you can see the stitch definition and all around just really perfectly finishes off your project. But I know there are some who are averse to blocking and that's completely personal preference. Lonnie here, she's more, um, more progress on her refracted twilight by Lisa Ross. She used egg hunt on Rawlings plus Alcott Minis, bunny, birds of a feather, lilac, chicky, lily, and tulip, which if I think right, was that our spring palette last year for a party pack maybe, or a set yep. of minis? It was, it was a party pack. I love how she's using it. That's awesome. The perfect spring mix. For sure. Oh, and here is Lorna. She is working on um, the Silver Bells by Tin Can Knits, and she's using Viva Magenta with another Heirloom Vegetables colorway. And it, uh, I, get, I think she's been sick, she said in a post, but she is doing so nicely on this sweater. I absolutely love it. That's that sort of low contrast, right? That yeah, which is really nice. It um, when I see low contrast work like that, it almost looks like a brocade, a mock brocade to me. You know how brocade has the varying mm -hmm. shades in it. It always reminds me of that. Yeah, Anne beautiful. Warner. Okay, I would have never expected Anne was doing socks. What a shock! <laughs> I love it. So um, these will truly knock your socks off, she says, and possibly make your eyeballs bleed. <laughs> so knock your socks off, which is in twain, paint the town red in Alcott and a little leftover limeade Alcott. Look at those. Those, those are, are so fun. I know. I love them. I laughed out loud, though, when I read what she, her caption to it. <laughs> Okay, and Tracy Ann is working on a hitchhiker. I think this is a maybe a knit along that she's doing with a group of friends, and she is using uh, is it tinsel, Michelle? Looks like solid gold to me, but it might be tinsel. Okay, could be solid gold then. Um, I do know it's on Fitzgerald, but yeah, yeah. So that's the hitchhiker shawl, and it's looking very good. And she always has the most beautiful tea setups. I love it. She does for sure. Absolutely. Hey, be sure to post your whips and FOs in the yarn to use. And if you do, if you take the time to tell us the pattern and or the yarn, that is super, super helpful for us. Oh, Cindy says, nope, she's not ready to split for her sleeves. Thank you for answering my question. She is going to try it on first. All so right. that makes good sense. Very good sense. That's one, another reason I am committed to top down sweaters as opposed to bottom up that and my traumatic experience um, with, um, I can't think of the pattern name. Why can't I think of it? I can see it. I love I it. Uh, what is one the of them will name? say, I, yeah. Well, Novelli. Novelli. Novelli, thank you. That's my traumatic experience with my Novelli that nearly caused me to need medication. You blocked it out. It's I so blocked traumatic. it out. I blocked it out. So I, I did mention we have the minis in bright, but I did not mention we have Remember When in minis, which also incidentally looks absolutely fantastic with no limits. 
Look at that. Yes. See that? You see those yeah. colors right there? I'm telling you, they're right there. They're right there. You can find nearly any colorway in No Limits. And I know people are ordering. That is good. You definitely, this is one of those colorways you want to stock your stash with. Um, if you've been waiting for Broody on Rawlings, we happen to have some in there, correct? Yeah, there are a few. There are a few. So keep that in mind. Absolutely. Okay. What else we got going on, Carolyn? What did we fail to mention? I'm looking. Okay. It's a couple of things. Die Life Plus Cub. If you um, have not signed up, but you want to sign up for this three month period, that closes Monday morning. And then as soon as it closes, I will be getting people into uh, the Facebook group. And then once you're in, um, or if you're already in, make sure you sign up for notifications because we'll be doing some extra live videos. In fact, I think the first one is, may even be coming up this next Thursday to choose the colors for the first die live. So um, yeah, so this, during this three month series, we'll be doing an extra live video just to choose the colors for the die live. So I will be posting those in the group so you want to make sure you have your notifications turned on. But that does close Monday morning. So if you're thinking you're sitting on the fence, the time is now to hop off the fence and sign up. For and sign we're up. coordinating colorways from the last Die Live live in the shop right now, right? Yep. Those are still um, there. If you can't stand the heat and go big or go home, which are beautiful, bold colorways, you need to go check them out uh, for sure. And those, I think, will come down on Monday as well, those pre-orders. So. so those are available on pre-order. Another reason to stock your stash. What are you wearing today? This is my ranunculus, um, which this is the one. Um, I, I was going to say I don't knit most patterns twice. You tend to find patterns you like and knit them twice. But I guess I did do the walk along twice. So, But this is the ranunculus that I did in Cavendish with... Um, I held, I think I held Fitz, did I hold Fitzgerald? I don't know. Fitzgerald, no, the Beast, which is basically Fitzgerald, MCN <laughs> and Bronte together on Cavendish or in the Cavendish colorway. And then, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking I want to do another one of these. I might want to do one. I was Me not too. so inclined, but now looking at yours, I'm like, I, I might like to do that. Yeah, it's fun because, and I've showed you all this before, but um, I like it because you can wear it with another shirt underneath and it's, um, it just looks, it's kind of a fun wear, draws the eye. And so, yeah, and it's not difficult. It, it looks like it is, but the pattern is actually super simple and it's fun. So you find yourself knitting, knitting, knitting because it's just fun to do so. Yeah, that's what, it's funny because I told Dion yesterday when we were working on the short row section for the Yoon, I said, once you get it, it's actually fun. I found that yeah. a lot of fun, Yeah, which was a little surprising to me. Dion wants to know if Bright will be coming on other bases. I suspect not anytime super soon, right? It's not on the dye schedule. I dyed it because it was one of the colors that I filled in for that spring party pack that I mentioned earlier. And because everybody loves wolf so much and I'm constantly looking for colors to put on wolf, I was like, oh, let me do a pot on wolf. So that was how that came to be. Um, so I, I don't have it on the die schedule, but, you know, you can do a special order um, and I'll, I'll keep it in mind. I, that's not the first time I remember when it came out in the swag for Yarn Lounge. There was someone else that was like, we need this color. And I, for some reason, it just keeps getting missed. But I do need to put it on the die schedule at some point. We can always do a special order for it as well. So if you need some, we can absolutely do a special order for it. Or you can get together with somebody and split a special order. Somebody can get two Hank. Somebody can get one Hank um, so that you meet the three Hank minimum. But it is a great color. I was just playing with it. I do you have it on the mini there? Because with Wolf having that gray base, it, it does, does look a little different. Yeah, I'll get it on the mini. Let me just okay. stand up and get that because I meant to have it on the mini. And it is, it does come out a bit different on the Wolf than it does, which I noted in the photographs. Mm, yeah. There it is. Yeah, and it, it's not blue. true. That looks bluer. It's It has a little more 
it's not a green colorway, but it's got a little more green. That's a little truer when I hold yeah. it back here. I like to hold it up here so you can see it, but it distorts the color. Yeah. That's, that's more the color. And you can see it is different on Wolf than it is on the regular Merino nylon bases or anything like that. Any yeah. um, Anything that doesn't have gray alpaca in it, essentially. <laughs> but it remember. is a gorgeous colorway for sure. It is beautiful. Dion suggesting that would be a good color for my ranunculus, which um, I it would I, hold it up to you again. Oh, it would. I mean, I know you like your neutrals, but that would that's a good standout color for you. It is pretty, but it's a little it's a little on the bright side for me for a whole sweater. But maybe not. I mean, mm -hmm. I do like it. You never know. Karen what wants to know what the mix of wolf is. It is gray alpaca, silk, and cashmere. I'll get you the percentages, 70% gray alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. It's a four-ply fingering weight yarn. It's part of our um, Gilded U collection, our black label, although this has a label over it, but it's our Gilded U collection. And um, because it is kind of that higher level, even more luxury fiber than our regular luxury fibers, it's just that next level up. Because we like the oh, good stuff. Can I show my socks? Yes. So oh, yeah, um, because we talked about the yun. We didn't go through our whip. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. So I um, I haven't shown these in a couple of weeks. Y'all remember, speaking of wolf, y'all remember I finished my first sock for bow. This is using, I'm holding wolf with twain because wolf being that alpaca has so much drape that I wanted to um, hold it with a merino nylon blend, which is what I did here. And then I'm now on my second sock. So holding the two strands together, I basically have a DK weight yarn, which these have affectionately become known, I think named by Cindy, the Wolfie socks. And I, you can see I've, I've marked my, uh, after, where's my camera here? The afterthought heel I have marked with two strands. So I just need to go back and do the afterthought heel, which I'm doing that just because Bo likes the fit of an afterthought heel. And these are for Bo. So I'm almost done. I just have to finish the foot and, and do that heel. And then I will be good to go. Well, yeah, I need to hurry up because I think he wants these for Scotland. You're going to publish that pattern eventually for us. So, yeah, I'm thinking that I, um, but I don't want to just do a vanilla pattern. Don't y'all want like a stitch, a fun stitch pattern? So, yeah, I, I've already figured out the fun stitch pattern. I just need to get it written up and, and knit a sample. And, you know, there's a whole process to this writing patterns. My goodness. I know. You can't just wiggle your nose and make it happen. I wish. You need a ghost pattern writer. Yes. <laughs> Where can we get one of those? Which I need to send Serena my next project. I just haven't had time to think lately. You all may know that my husband was ordained finally on Tuesday as a priest in the Episcopal Church. And so um, that was a lot of lead up, but we're, we're there. Slowly things are getting, slowly major life-changing events are getting ticked off my schedule. So hopefully I get back to life as usual and boring again soon. Not boring, but you know what I mean, like predictable life. Yes. is coming up. So yeah. So hey, well, there is beauty in the mundane. I am convinced. There is indeed. I'm, I am ready for some mundane. I am totally ready for some mundane for a while. Um, so we're getting there slowly, but surely. So, and plans in the future include our featherweight club that will be coming up. It just hasn't been because it was on hold because of life events and some other things coming up in the future, yarn lounge out there somewhere in the future and some other things, but, um, I you can only work on so much at one time and slowly working my way through that leaves headspace and time for other projects. But we are absolutely, absolutely Lonnie. Yeah, I think you might be right, Lonnie. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't quite down to your back from Scotland. That is absolutely true because um, I don't know if I mentioned on last week's live or not, maybe not, but sometime between now and the time we go to Scotland, I'm headed to Kentucky for about a week. <laughs> so um, but yes, yes, Dion, exactly as, no oh, fall retreat. There we go. As normal as we get. Lonnie's asking about the fall retreat. Well, interestingly, you should ask about that, Lonnie. We were just talking about that this week at Olive and 2U Studios. So more information will be coming out about. Are you coming, Lonnie, this year? Is this coming? the year? Are you coming? Oh. That would be awesome. We do plan another following retreat this next year. Our following, we've had two now, two annual following retreats, and both were 
loads of fun and very exciting. So yes, we will be doing a Halloween retreat again coming up this year. And like I said, we were all of NTU headquarters was all a buzz this week as we chatted about that. So definitely plans in the future. All kinds of fun stuff going on. Absolutely. And y'all, you've been seeing those features that Monica's been doing. I think this week there's only one left of the one she put out there. So um, you might want to search feature on our website and see it because a couple people snagged up the other ones and they are gorgeous. Monica's got a fab eye for color and she's had some fun putting some features together. I've been doing some stuff behind the scenes with her too. And we might both be rocking with features soon. So, you know, features, special features are exclusive to our Yarny use as a general rule. We put curated selections together, usually give you a little break on the price for them. And sometimes you get some extra goodies. Sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't, which makes it all the funner. Funner? Is that a word? All the more fun. Because when you go to the box, you never know, you know, your postal box, you never know what's going to be in that package. So keep an eye out for features. We're going to be doing more of those coming up. And it's a great way. Sometimes you can snag things that aren't even on our website, things that we've got in the vault in the back room. So it's a good way to stay in touch with what's happening at Olive and to you and snag all the goodies. Indeed. I'm just saying, I, I plan to work on my Yoon today. I'm nice. Gonna, my gossamer twist is still in prog progress. I made just a couple couple rounds of progress this week, not a lot. Um, you did. So what are you sending to Serena? My early bloomer from, I don't know, three years ago, maybe. So it's got to be finished. The neck needs to be finished and then the sleeves. So I'm going to send that off to Serena, hopefully this week. If you're watching Serena, stay tuned. Yeah, you need that for this summer. I know exactly. And it's in potato peel pie and swan white. And I love potato peel pie. Y'all know how much I love potato peel pie. So, yeah. yeah. You know what that reminds me of is our summer sweater make along. That's going to be coming up. That's something it else is. right after Scotland. Summer sweater make along. Yep. Indeed. Absolutely. Oh, good. Donnie, super, Lonnie, super happy. Die Live arrived and it is fantastic. Good. Had a couple oh. people who've had some experiences lately with the post office. Um, the post office sent back a box of socks for one of our subscribers. And there was, I took it to the local post office and was like, can you tell me why this came back? And he's like, no, there's no reason it should have been sent back. Um, but we got that sent back out to her. And then we've got a Yarny you who's waiting on her Salinger pop club, who it's apparently a celebrity because it's touring the Midwest before it makes it to her house. And nice. the tracking yesterday said it was going to show up at her house and then it didn't. And then the tracking changed and said, oh, it's late. So I will say that if you have, you know, we have no control over the post office once we hand it off to them. We do keep receipts on everything. I, you know, I see other small businesses come in here and just put their packages up and walk away. I'm like, no, I want my receipt because I want to know that I've got proof that they had it. But once we hand it off to them, we don't really have any control, but it's good to let us know because after about, I think it's 15 days, they make us wait. If it doesn't show up, then we can follow up on it. Um, but there, there are, there only one time in our nearly seven years of business did a package not arrive eventually. There was one time and it was a big package. It was several Hanks of the beast and some other things. And we worked that out. We did good customer service on that, but um, only one time. It eventually does typically, typically arrive, but our apologies, sometimes um, it just happens that way. The Postal Service is a huge organization and it's bound to have some hiccups. So um, we do apologize when that happens, but by and large, we get good luck with, um, with the Postal Service. I wonder if somebody out there is enjoying some pilfered skeins of the beast. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I or hope they're doing something pretty with it. Or they're <laughs> laying in a post office, like totally discarded or, you know. You the just, very back of a bin. You just never know. That was a few years ago. I think it was two or three years ago that that happened. Um, it was like, I want to say it was like maybe six Hanks of the Beast or something. It was a very large order, but we got it all sorted out. So, mm. yeah, it happens. But sometimes they do make tours. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. All right. I think we are just about done for today. As always, we are so grateful to you for tuning in either live or after um, after we've gone ahead and posted this. We're so, so grateful for you. May has a last minute shout out to Morgan. 
winding our skeins is so great compared to some others. Oh, wow. nice. I will let her know that. Yeah, she is the primary um, twister of all the skeins. And I, you know, that's one of the things we do. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, but I, I don't want you to think it's a guarantee because I mean, we do, I have told my children, listen, and I'm just going to be blunt with y'all because they work in the dye studio. I have let them know, listen, we don't charge low rock bottom prices. We charge prices because we do good quality work. That means that you two working for Olive and to you do good quality work. So they know that I expect them to really treat the yarn um, with respect and to do it properly. That doesn't mean that you're never going to get a skein. Ask Sharon um, that <laughs> that doesn't give you that or that gives you problems because sometimes you're going to have a skein that just is going to give you problems. But I'm so happy to hear that for the most part, winding our yarn is is a treat compared to to others for sure. That's a that good is, thing to hear. That's good news. Yeah, it's so good. We do try to put out a quality product. Absolutely. And I think we do. I think we do. We're super grateful for that. Yeah. All right, everybody. We are so grateful to you to being here. As we mentioned at the beginning, if you haven't yet subscribed to Olive and To You Studios right here on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell for notifications. The links to the Yoon video one and two that Monica and I are doing are in your newsletter this week. So if you haven't yet taken a look at it, Make sure that you take a look at those and then stay tuned for the third video, which will be coming up this week. Be sure to get active in the Yarny Use group. We have a lot of fun in there. There's no drama, to, drama, no politics, really. We don't even have to moderate it to make sure that happens. Y'all moderate yourselves. And we're super grateful for that. So be sure and be active in there. Post your projects and know that we appreciate everything you do and all of your support. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic week and we will see you in the Yarn of Use. Bye.